our goal for 2007, which is why my eyes were on this report, because it, it's like we spent a year trying to get people to understand stats. Right. And when you hear a stat, think of the other side. Because I remember on something that, that just took me by, I was like, wait a minute, I was watching Black of America, and remember they said in Black, Amer Black in America, um, 50, it said 50% of single mothers are living below the poverty line. But being that I had consciously gotten to the point where I'm going to listen for the other side of that stat, I said, well, wait a minute, that means that 50% are not. Right. So let me show that 50% that's not. You know, let's go figure out how to how do we communicate with everybody else, you know. So we gotta start listening to the other side of that number. Especially when they said thirty percent is doing this, well that means seventy percent is not. But I, we have a hard time finding it. It's not in Google. Well, uh, to your point of even drive us, mm -hmm. um, it is not um, I, I heard uh, Bishop Chamber Owen say one time. Uh, the truth has feet, but lies have wings. Right. And the truth gets there slower, mm -hmm. but when it gets there, it can stand on its own. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can, we have to, we're challenged or charged with the responsibility of exposing truth uh, in the positive aspect, mm -hmm. because the negative is already exposed right. um, immensely. And so we, each of us and more, um, are charged with exposing the truth mm -hmm. in a positive. And when you expose it, when you put it out there, when you block it, when you internet it, when you right. billboard it, right. people will become more and more conscious and aware mm -hmm. of what's going on. Mm -hmm. now, there are no um, necessarily positive billboards right. going up in right. 975 about the statistics. Um, and so um, when those billboards are there and come out, you know, we'll become more comprehensive to what's going on. Mm -hmm. So exposing the truth right. um, it is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we have to decide that we're going to do that. Right. You know, right. Because I mean, when I say I've been working on this for a year, and then to, to start with to get the report in 2007, and to go right back to it November 2008, you know, and then I'm, I'm letting you guys know, so I'm expecting you to you know give some wings to this. When you talk about this, because um, to take it into a church mm -hmm. and say to a congregation, this is where we are, and if you affect change within the, the church, and how, did, how does it get out to, to the neighborhood? How do you take it further than that? Well, I, I think as you talk about change, um, mm -hmm. the responsibility of pastoralship is changing as well. Mm -hmm. um, it is no longer just a responsibility for us to relay the message okay. or teach it. Um, it is our responsibility to show and assist with application. Mm -hmm. And many people across the country go into churches, you know, by droves, right, right. and they hear, mm -hmm. but the application is far off. And so we need to spend more time teaching on the process and even being a part of the application process, mm -hmm. as opposed to just being the spokesperson or the mouthpiece of the word, um, being out there showing, not being afraid to take that call mm -hmm. or, or to build a ministry of, you know, financial management, build a ministry of, uh, self, you know, esteem and so on and so forth. So creating the ministries of application, right. I think will definitely take this report, give it those feet that it need, mm -hmm. and really uh, you'll begin to see change, not just in the church, you'll see it in the workplace, because those same people in the church do right. work in corporate right. America, mm -hmm. do have children in daycare, do have children in school, and right. so it can be impacted in that way. Um, but again, as I was talking to um, the panel this morning, it takes people mm -hmm. to decide that that's what they want to do. Right. Even if it's one person at a time, don't give up. Don't give up. Okay, we are special guests along with you guys are, uh, is here. I want to just introduce everybody to Miss Elizabeth Obalami. We need to do just a little bit of shifting. Uh, I need to go work on the sound over here for our viewers. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, just to bring you up to speed, we are having a conversation in the room. It is live on the internet, so people are watching. I passed out a couple of documents. Um, this is from the Pew Report, and this is just a snapshot of a 91-page report that came out about black America in 2007, mm -hmm. November 2007. So here we are, November 2008, and Mr. Change, and I wanted to see how this looks today, what we think about this today. So we were just kind of looking through at some of the, the figures that they gave, and you see what started out. Um, there's the gap between, and that's one of the reasons I had to have you here. Because we went through this campaign, and Elizabeth Omalami is the daughter of civil rights crusader Hosea Williams. Mm -hmm. 
and she's also running the Hosea Williams Feed the Hungry. And I know everybody's got to be aware of that. We have some people who are new to Atlanta. They, only been in the, they haven't been in Atlanta all their lives. So, therefore, we want to share that because it's coming up on a big season for them. Uh, and they've not had a break since Hurricane Katrina. Or before that, I guess I should say. Um, so I wanted her to talk to us and talk to our internet audience uh, in a conversation and bring their initiatives and what they're doing back into the fold. Um, we talked about the middle class. We, we really just got started in the conversation. I need to go work with the tech stuff. I want everybody to grab something to drink. Go ahead and grab your lunch because 1.30, you know, the time our time will be up before we know it. So let's grab lunch and then we'll come back and well, I heard it. You want to introduce yourself before we, you want to say anything before we grab lunch? No, I just am amazed that this woman is always so right on with the issues. Thank you. She is uh, always um, putting the information out there that we need to be thinking about for the right now season. And it's mm-hmm. critical uh, for our communities. It's almost disastrous from where I sit. It feels very much like Katrina mm-hmm. right now for mm-hmm. us. And um, it's very, very serious. And so I just appreciate you so much appreciate you. for putting putting it out there and keeping us aware. Now, I know some people wonder, it's like, gosh, she looks at me. Yeah, you saw her on TV, saw her in a couple movies. <laughs> she doesn't do uh, acting. Um, my favorite is her walking down the hall in Glory Road. If anybody's seen that, when she goes with the, with, to get the sun and then check in school. Mm-hmm. Um, you get ready to be on stage? Um, no. Didn't you, you guys are playing? I thought you were playing a production. No, a I just finished. Uh, okay. I just finished a film uh, down in um, Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. okay. Called okay. the Bill Collector. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. cool. So we're gonna come back. Let's grab some lunch. So let's make sure everybody can watch and see us.